Star Wars Rebels, Family Reunion and Farewell. Ezra's team takes a drastic action to free Lothal, infiltrating Imperial HQ while Thrawn returns to stop them, ultimately forcing Ezra to surrender and confront an even greater evil. Now for this episode, I'll deviate from my usual format and do things a little bit different as there's a lot to take in, and I meet a lot. I'll start off by saying that despite absolutely loving the past few episodes leading up to this one, I uh, don't know. My feelings are very mixed for the series finale, and hopefully you'll understand why. So let's start. This episode itself had Rogue One vibes in the beginning, with the rebels infiltrating the Imperial headquarters with the goal of seeing their plan through, fully knowing the risks involved and being completely outnumbered. I figured that just like in Rogue One, that either all of them would die, well okay, not all, as Hera we know survived the show, but still, that most of them wouldn't make it out alive. And well, I was really wrong there, as it turned out, everyone did survive. Well, with the exception of Gregor, who took a blaster shot to the chest while only wearing a plain undershirt and obviously didn't make it. Poor Gregor, couldn't cheat death a second time. But yet Melch, the Ugnaught, who as well was wearing no armor, also took a blaster shot to the chest and somehow unexplicably survived. I guess Ugnaughts are apparently more resilient to blaster bolts than clone troopers. Huh, go figure. But I was really expecting Zeb to die this episode by the hands of Rook. And to my surprise, he survived, and it was instead Rook who bit the dust. Uh, electricity? I don't know, he... <laughs> He just got fried. Ah, tough. Very disappointing and underwhelming character who couldn't even finish Zeb off. Anyways, the Rebels manage to accomplish their plan when Thrawn shows up with a Star Destroyer and drops a couple of pot shots on the Lothal capital city in order to get Ezra to surrender. Ezra agrees despite Hera and everyone being against this idea, with him going anyways. Aboard the Star Destroyer, Thrawn leaves Ezra with a hologram of Palpatine, which was his fake, innocent image that he shows off to the public. Palpatine does what he does best and tries to manipulate Ezra in order to open up a piece of the Lothal Jedi Temple aboard the Star Destroyer. This part was fun, as it was kind of a throwback to Palpatine's manipulative days from the Clone Wars. Instead of manipulating Anakin, we see him do that to Ezra instead, and it was interesting to see. However, Ezra wasn't fooled and instead destroyed the Temple Leftovers, leaving Palpatine to sick some of his royal guards and stormtroopers on him. Which, uh, really didn't do jack. Eh, I'm a little disappointed in Palpatine here. Being, yeah, I know, I know, it would be overkill, but at the same time, make the most sense. But why wouldn't Darth Vader be aboard Thrawn's Star Destroyer to take Ezra out in case he didn't go through with Palpatine's plan? That right there would guarantee Ezra wouldn't leave the room alive. Anyways, we see Ezra's own plan come into fruition, as a swarm of Purgle, aka Space Whales, come soaring down from the skies of Lothal and decimate Thrawn's fleet. Okay, can't say I ever thought I'd see them again, but it's so weird that it actually kinda works? Not to mention now that whole Space Whale episode isn't considered filler anymore. Guess Filoni was right, every episode is connected. Well actually, never mind, we don't see Clanny again and that would have been pretty rad to see him arrive with his droids to save the day, but I digress. Ezra then comes face to face with Thrawn, who's surprised that the space whales were able to get through his initial fleet, even trying to contact Captain Pillion, which uh, pretty cool, I was not expecting such a name drop. I guess that means Pillion is now officially canon, but it's kind of a shame as we don't see him on the show nor in the novels at all. Which leads me to believe that he's probably a different character from his EU counterpart. But then we see the space whales completely overtake the Chimera, capturing Thrawn and then jumping into hyperspace together with Ezra. Poof! Just like that! No resolve or anything that tells us what happens to these two characters. Are they still alive? Ah, <sighs> nah, can't be. The bridge windows on the Star Destroyer were broken. Ezra and Thrawn should both be dead as Lightspeed without protection would have killed them instantly. Unless Ezra pulled a Leia and saved them both, somehow. Uh, but why would he try to save Thrawn then? Or maybe the hyperspace created by the Purgle is special and allows for beings to somehow still live without oxygen? 
<sighs> hard to say. Expect now thousands of fan speculation theories about this now, as because Dave Filoni said that Theron would survive the show and at the end we also learn that Ezra is still apparently alive too. But before we go that far, let's take a couple of steps back and first talk about the Rebels' plan and why it shouldn't have worked. Okay, the plan. It's to infiltrate the Imperial Dome, issue Protocol 13, and evacuate all Imperials off the planet into the Dome, and then blow it up. Which of their limitations are the Rebels considered? Sounds like a sound, temporary plan. Yeah, by temporary, I mean sure, all the Imperials are off and the planet is Empire free. For like, what? A couple of days, maybe hours at best? Once the Empire finds out it was a faulty order, they'll just come back and invade yet again. Nothing accomplished. Rex even realizes this and says that they need to prepare for the Empire's counter-attack, with Hera's answer to that being that they have an entire planet of unarmed civilians ready to defend from an Imperial invasion. Yeah, uh, okay. That doesn't really make sense, but yet we find out later on that apparently that worked, as the Empire never does return with everyone living a peaceful life on Lothal all the way until the Battle of Endor. So in the five or six years since Lothal was taken back, you're telling me that the Empire, at the height of its power constructing two Death Stars during those years, and Palpatine fully knowing how strong of the force Lothal was, just completely left it alone after being chased away after losing one battle? Especially when left alone, just thinking about the horrendous PR it would be for the Empire, which would only lead to more planets attempting to do the same, and remember, this is still before the Battle of Scarif too. So, would they really let this all slide? I just expect the Empire to come back with an even larger force and reclaim the planet. But then, hey, what happy ending would that be for a Disney XD show anyways? And if you haven't noticed, that was honestly my biggest gripe of the entire episode. <laughs> But anyways, we get a time jump afterwards all the way to the end of the Battle of Endor. And Sabine, who everyone thought should be living and ruling on Mandalore, has spent the last six years living in Ezra's old house on Lothal, alone and single, living the hermit life. I mean, with Sabine now sporting Ezra's haircut for some weird reason, can you really blame the single bachelors of Lothal for passing on her? But moving on, apparently after overtaking Lothal, only Hera and Rex chose to return to the Rebel Alliance, while everyone else decided to ditch it. Kallus decides to move to the Lassat planet Lear San, being the only human on the planet and settle down over Lassat, the race he helped instrument a whole genocide against. And they welcome him there with open arms. Okay. Makes about as much sense as Heinrich Müller of the Gestapo deciding to go live in Israel after World War II and being welcomed with love by the Jewish people. But yeah, going back to the show in hand, Wolf assumably goes back to Celios to live in his at, -AT home by himself without Gregor, living a dark, lonely life, and uh, this is getting depressing. Pretty much all of them decide to ditch the rebellion for some reason. And why exactly they do that, I don't know. Especially when the Empire was still yet to be defeated and the Rebel Alliance needed all the help it could get after the Battle of Scarif. But hey, it all worked out for the best in the end anyway, even without their help. And Hera has a kid now too, Jason Syndulla, who, what are the odds that he can play a role in Episode 9 as a Force Sensitive now that I think about it? Instead of Jason Solo, we got Jason Syndulla. Anyways, Ahsoka shows up to Sabine after nearly eight years of doing god knows what, now wearing a mysterious white cloak looking like she apparently decided she wanted to become Gandalf. Both Sabine and she head off on a brand new adventure to try and find Ezra, who's apparently still alive. So the big question everyone has, could this be the sequel series to Rebels? Where Ahsoka and Sabine go on crazy wacky adventures looking for Ezra only to end up in the series finale of that show on Canto Bite, and find Ezra suffering from amnesia, stuttering and slurring his words and calling himself now DJ. Eh, it could technically happen. But like I said before, I'm very mixed about the whole finale. On one side, I did enjoy it and it was very well done. Clearly a lot of work and thought went into making it and I salute Dave Filoni for giving us such a fun-filled episode like this. On the other hand, I'm not sure if it felt like a proper series finale. 
A lot of the stuff that usually irks me on Rebels was really prevalent here, and it felt like it was missing something. If you ask me, the A World Between Worlds episode felt a lot more like a series finale than this did. So coming off of that into this is a little bit disappointing. And to be honest, I could have done without that whole cliffhanger at the end, as it kind of detracted from the actual conclusion to the Ghost Crew story. But with that all said, it was a fun series overall. Sure, it had its ups and downs. And if I gotta pick, I still prefer Clone Wars over Rebels. But here's hoping the next series will be just as good, if not better. But that'll do it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and if so, drop a like to support the channel. Also, if you're looking for more Star Wars content, I'd recommend subscribing and hitting that bell notification so you can be notified whenever a new video is posted. As always, I'll see you on the next one.